Thank you, uh, Martin, and good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you to Ben and Jeremy uh, for having me. I'm thrilled uh, to be uh, addressing you uh, today. I'm told that uh, I have a very diverse uh, audience, uh, investors, entrepreneurs, uh, enablers, educators, and students. So I thought it'd be useful uh, here for me to just share my own journey uh, to this point where, as an investor, I try to put uh, purpose uh, first. This isn't uh, about getting caught up uh, in a fad or anything. Uh, it's not uh, me trying to claim to be terribly methodical about it all. I think it's just a story uh, about how I grew up. I had a long career in finance, uh, starting out as an investment banker back in KL. Uh, in 1989. It was a time uh, when emerging markets were just being uncovered uh, as an exciting asset class. When we believed uh, in the Friedman Doctrine that the only duty of the company was to maximize shareholder value. When we pretended uh, to look up to Wall Street's Gordon Gecko for his fashion, fashion sense. But in reality, uh, we also worshiped his mantra uh, that greed is good. And it was a time when governance rules and regulations were always three to stop, uh, three to four stop steps behind financial innovation and indeed naughty financiers. It was a heady time, and it is quite incredible how even the best brains, uh, the best brought up, and the best educated people were going with the flow. If you weren't dancing to the music, you look like a stiff, and basically did not get far in your career. And finance was the place to be, where growth was exponential, where as an employee, you could get seriously rich and where talent could quickly outweigh tenure and experience. I remember many moments thinking, this isn't right or that isn't proper, but I stayed on, I stayed in. So when I look back, I consider myself one of the guilty ones. I was a full on part of the international financial system that was unfair and probably did more harm than good to the world. After spurts of exponential growth in financial activity came devastation that hurt real economy and people much more than the primary culprits, the bankers and the financiers. In 1998, I saw chaos and enormous hardship in many Asian countries. And in 2008, I saw capitalism itself being brought to the brink of collapse. Excesses in, of global finance also has to take more than its fair share of blame for both the climate and inequality crisis that we face today. I feel a sense of obligation to now be part of efforts to find a better, more sustainable path for finance and capitalism. I cannot yet claim that everything I do is on that path, but at my family office and the National Development Bank that I chair, I, we already do place purpose first. Of course, we need a new generation of financiers schooled in the lessons of, the, of past excesses and failures and new economic thinking. But if I may, we also need wisdom from those who lived it if we are really going to evolve a better system. The early shift away from, pure, from the pure Friedman doctrine came with corporate philanthropy or CSR as it was popularly known. In Malaysia, CIMB took a leading role. In 2007, we set up the CIMB Foundation as the bank's CSR vehicle to genuinely give back directly to society. We embraced the principle that across ASEAN, we should help every community where we had a branch or presence. The CIMB Community Link program was decentralized in that branches would themselves choose the causes they wanted to help with, and the bank would make financial contributions if staff themselves committed their own time and energy. 10 years later, CIMB again set the standard by making the voluntary commitment to set aside 1% of annual profits for CSR. It is a fact <clears throat> that the corporate CSR dollar can be much more effective than governments. I had no doubt that CIMB Foundation did a huge amount of good for society all the way from free cataract operations for the underprivileged to financially enabling the greatest squash player of all time, Nicole David. In fact, even Thailand's Patti Tapatanakit, the recent LPGA uh, major champion, was a CIMB junior golf development product. 
In recent years, though, I have, been, I have begun to realize that profit maximization come CSR wasn't enough. It was like going to war, killing as many enemies and causing as much collateral damage as you want while being an exemplary neighbor when you get home. There had to be a better way of fighting the wars. Minimal collateral damage, limited human casualty. So in business, profit should not be the prime motivator. Doing well shouldn't just be about profits. The challenge then is, if not profit, then what? Of course, the Vogue term today is purpose. A company sets out its purpose and profit is a byproduct that satisfies shareholders. In my personal investment, I've embraced this paradigm. We at Zach Capital, my family office, invest in opportunities that pass our internal impact test. We don't invest just to make a return. We invest when we think that our capital can be part of making an important contribution to a bigger cause. We invested in the Genesis Fund because we believe that it fills an important space to enable young technology businesses to raise less dilutive debt capital. We recently invested in agriculture because we believe food security should be a national priority for Malaysia. We invested in many startups in the hope that we can help them achieve breakthroughs that meaningfully impact in areas such as healthcare, the environment, and inequality. Our investment, one investment where all this comes together is Tani Hub, one of Genesis's venture debt portfolio. Tani Hub is an Indonesia-based company that applies technology in the agriculture sector with the aim of raising livelihoods of farmers. Agriculture is a main source of employment in rural Indonesia, employing around 40 million uh, people, most of whom have been left behind by Indonesia's economic growth. Tani Hub allows consumers to buy fresh products directly from farmers while providing farmers with an alternative and legally registered source of fund. Are we sacrificing performance in our quest for purpose? Perhaps, but not necessarily. There's plenty of data that shows that investors and companies that drive impactful outcomes can also deliver strong returns and profit. It is not a question that I personally dwell on though. I just find greater fulfillment this way. The challenge for multi-stakeholder companies embracing purpose and other non-profit priorities is far more complicated. Many small companies just need to make money to survive. They can't afford other priorities. Despite the best efforts of Larry Fink of BlackRock and other public companies uh, and others, public companies are still benchmarked by financial returns relative to their competitors. Institutional investors are now according premiums for companies based on their ESG matrices, but a read of analyst reports will tell you that things have not changed very much. Return to shareholders still rule. And there have been some high profile CEOs who put purpose first but were soon deemed underperformers by institutional investors. The recent fall of Emmanuel Faber, CEO of the French Danone Group, described by FT as one of the most visible advocates of a more responsible capitalism is a big case in point. So how do we square the circle to marry capitalism's survival of the fittest tenant with a purpose first culture, to imbue ESG or climate change or sustainability into the corporate agenda and make capitalism work to save the planet? to evolve a system that is fairer and more inclusive, to compel today's generation to work in order to make things better for future generations. I do not have the answers, but I think we have to engineer reforms on, on multiple fronts. Let me just share five thoughts on moving towards a more sustainable and fairer financial system. One, market participants and private enterprise will not go very far in self-reforms. In the end, they are wired to fight to win and be paranoid about each other. We will need bigger governments to impose rules on ESG and CSR and ensure compliance. Two, I think accounting rules can be used to realign behavior, for instance, by charging for social costs like damage to the environment. Nothing drives corporate behavior more than real PNL. Thirdly, I think tax systems have to be more progressive so as to afford more effective safety nets and redistribution policies. For instance, I could never understand why in Malaysia, glove companies made billions of super profits from the pandemic, yet were not imposed super taxes to help pay for the cost of this very pandemic. Fourth, I think there needs to be better international coordination on ESG and taxation to minimize cross-border arbitrage. Degradation of the environment and amplifying inequality cannot be inter-nation competitive tools. 
And finally, I think governance frameworks should encourage or even ensure greater diversity on boards, not just in gender, gender, but also in age, ethnicity and backgrounds so that companies are more in tune uh, with society at large. At CIMB, one of my last acts was to propose to, to have and to always have an under 30 member of the board of, of directors, but I ran out of time uh, before I could implement it. And on that note, I think I've also run out of time today. So let me just conclude uh, to say that from the vantage point of an old time finance pro professional, I would like to call on my fellow old timers to step up and help make a better financial system. We owe it. As for the younger generation, until we overhaul the system comprehensively, you must live with the imperfections, but this shouldn't stop you from imposing your own better values, value systems and self-restraints to progress a better, more sustainable and fairer financial system. I love that Genesis embodies the spirit. I'm glad to be part of their network and I'm honored that they have let me have your attention this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dato Sri, for the insightful keynote. I'm sure there'll be plenty of discussion around your keynote at the impact panel session later.